don't have can uh, give us a list for the next uh, games and we should we should uh, next time have a line to the referee table so flipper is on the in ball position starting now uh, but uh, uh, Budweiser oh, broke through very lost the nice now, into is the defense attacking. of uh, uh, the flipper. But flipper here, ball is free in flipper hands. And now we see the counter attack player is pushing from the wall. But stopped by Budweiser. And now the four checking in the middle begins. And both teams are able to do a pretty much physical four checking. And we have a cluster going up to the surface. Uh, flipper player owning the ball and two Budweiser player trying to get it free. Ball is out in the hands of flipper player and immediately attacked by a uh, uh, Budweiser player. Now we can here see the number 20 here now stealing the defending position. This is what I what I wanted to say. Now here he is in very good position. It was number 20 who is Tim Jensen, but uh, the pass was not coming. So the, the attacker decided for himself, oh no, this is, he is in good position, but maybe it's too risky to pass the ball through. So he stopped the attack. Now we see here number 17. This was a very well interception by Philip Lauritsen. But immediately lost the ball. And so this is so far a quite similar match we have seen before. Here Flipper is, is bringing, uh, rising up the pressure. And uh, so far uh, Budweiss is here more in the defending part. And this is the game of Flipper. This is exactly the game of Flipper. Owning the ball, playing around the yeah. basket, coming from the... Uh, from the close side and then moving in with two three players and starting to create chaos but the Budweiser team is very experienced they wait for the pass That's and it. intercept it and go out and They're this ball, ball job, is fa yeah. falling down and this is dangerous this flipper has the chance to dig into the defense no, before it is established very good. You have seen he, he's just going through this was uh, Philip Lauritsen who, who got from the bottom pushed the defender a bit up and he was not trying to score he just passed to his other up, uh, team player who was then in the better position to score here, but didn't make it. So and far, this was a good game. You player. always have to make the decision, like Budweiser here. Do you go into total defense, or do you go out a little yeah. bit and forecheck and tr get your chance to break out and not be pinned on your own basket? And here, Budweiser made a decision, and they are going forward. We are in the half of uh, Flipper, and now two Budweiser players are getting in. But you see that the passes, the difference between yeah. Budweiser and Flipper is that they, they're attacking. And they're always go trying to find the pathway upper the defender, while Flipper is trying to find uh, the pathway down, also under the uh, the defender, the opponent defender. And so it's much completely easier. Different. And now you see here a very difficult, a very hard situation. Number 20, Philip again, or Tim Jensen here, was stealing the defender position. Call from Mello, the referee. But he was too pushing active. without ball. Yeah, he was too active without the ball. He pushed already the a bit with his legs, the goalkeeper. So this was a. Uh, yeah, into play as a foul by the referees, and now he is giving now a three throw in favor for uh, Budweiss. So far, we see an equal game now, but the difference is I don't think that it's a well experienced defending team like Budweiss. You're not able to pass the ball over the defender yes. on the level of his chest. Close to their noses. These are usually the balls are getting very, very low. Yeah. So even you see that the, the, the distance between the two pass partners of Budweiss is more than, more than almost two too meters. Big. Yeah, it's, it's too, too big, big for a team like Flipper, yeah. they intercept. While Flipper really trying to make the pass at the basket, we're talking about centimeters. Yeah. So we have centimeters pathway They bring the ball to each other. Against meters of pathway strategy. Totally agree. So it's uh, for a team, for Flipper, it's easier to intercept the passes from Budweiss than it is from Budweiss, uh, the Flipper team. Fast now we have a here. fast counter attack and uh, the, the defense has difficulties to establish here on the Budweiss basket. And uh, now it flips so out doing again. A very good job here. They do a super good job. No, this is a this is very oh this oh is almost a one to one oh situation. Here, this was our attack. This was should be a time penalty. Have you seen how this number fifteen from the Czech Republic grabbed the mask and the face? This was a, in my opinion, a clear Hold time the mask. penalty. Grab the mask is uh, yeah. like shitting in the mask. Oh shit! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but he touched the mask or was attacking the mask to defend here. Again, an ama amazing game here from both teams. And, uh, and uh, like Tosin said, uh, the, the Budweiss team in the attack uh, has more difficulties to keep the close game you need to play in the defense perimeter of a team like Flipper. And Flipper does a very good job in its attack, but uh, had many chances, but couldn't uh, put them uh, no, into action. And the the goes the ball in now again. to number nine, he could not score. But at least this is the game style. You know, one player is getting in. Pushing the defender, then passing to the next player who's really located. 
definitely they were touching the basket immediately, even with the head. So it's, it's that close how they are uh, positioning themselves. And here the comes basket. the next wave. Yeah. But uh, you see how they analyze the game when they go in. They don't go in if they don't see a chance and if they see their colleagues on the, on the surface are not ready. So here Flipper is waiting again, waiting, waiting, holding the ball, waiting. And here comes the attack from the close side. Into the Russell defense, in three 17. players around uh, the basket ah. off Budweis. Russell didn't Russ make it, ball is down in the hands of the this goalkeeper and two flipper players tried to rip him out, and but and it was took a little bit too long, otherwise there would be a, have a gap between the goalkeeper and flipper would have a chance to score. But, but here's Budweis again on the attack, having the ball on the surface, intercepted by flipper immediately and we're both flipper back again in the Budweis half. But this was quite probably the best chance they had so far. Rasmussen got the ball, Call from but the he referee. has not seen number 17, who is uh, Philip Lawrenson on the open side of the goal. He just should have dropped the ball a bit on the other side. He would have a mass of time to score. So this was, unfortunately, Rasmussen could, has not seen his teammate in the best position here so far. Free throw against Batwise. It's still 0-0. Zero zero and and yeah. it's a timeout uh, for Blue. So Flipper is taking the time out very, very close to the halftime break. I'm not really sure why they're doing this because, yeah, of course, a couple they of seconds They have a free throw for them. Yeah, maybe they try to make a special attack, you think so? Yeah, Let's I think see. so because it's the end of the first half. And for Flipper, normally they try to go into the second half yeah. with at least one score. Okay. So there are maybe more or less around three minutes left then in the game. So still three minutes time for... Uh, for the uh, here now, we see Rasmus with the number 14 talking to his team. He has <laughs> already the best chance to give the, the, the assist to his teammate number 17. So this was one of the best scene I've seen so far. The strategy is always the same. One attacker is bringing the ball very close to the basket. Another one tries to get in position on the open side. And then they're not trying to bring the ball over the defender, but under the defender. So uh, this is the, the strategy of Flipper. So far, Budweiser is doing a great job here in defending and destroying all these chances. Nevertheless, there was not a real chance for Budweiser so far, and I don't know how they wanna gotta want to win. Maybe they try to bring the game in the penalty shooting, what will be after the playing time. So this game needs to find a winner. If there is a 0-0 zero zero at the end of the game time, uh, there will be a penalty shootout. Now we see here again number one from Fribber, what is Kaas Henrik in the position waiting for the ball but uh, the forechecking is very nice so far so but you see here big gaps in the Budweiser position even the defender is lifting himself now there's a gap there's a gap now and again you see this I don't know why they're not giving favor here so this is stupid by the referees there was a really good chance to score they stopped the game style they should have let the game play because it's in favor for flipper they had a really good chance here to score because we have seen one player already stealing the defender position. So this was a bit unlucky for, for Flipper right now. I would have I would have seen that they would let the game flow uh, continue and here just uh, if you stop such a good situation, just a good flow, it needs to be really something really uh, important like a time penalty or something like that. What what gives a, a, a what is giving an advantage to Flipper. Just having the ball and starting with the ball is not a real advantage because uh, the other team can also breathe and get themselves in, in position again. Now we see the deck referee giving a call. We're not really sure what happens at the surface. But it's a free throw now for, for the Czech team from Budweis. And it's the first time now we see here after a long time that Flipper is in the defense position. So we haven't seen the goalie at the basket of Flipper uh, very often in this game so far, but let's see. One and a half minutes left, and uh, I have to pay respect to the Budweiser team. It's 0-0, zero zero and this nice. is a good game by Budweiser here, uh, because I think, uh, like you said in the beginning, Flipper is a little bit in the advantage here with their experience uh, in the EuroLeague oh, and everything. Oh, this is a that was really close. The goalkeeper was not lying on the basket, yeah. but the uh, ball was snatched away it was by Budweiser. It was number one, Jonas. Uh, Punch or Funch, what is his name? Funch. Funch, who is one of the m famous players from uh, from Denmark. He's also a national player, very, very fast, scored a lot of goals in the EuroLeague. Now we see here number 17 again. So this is probably also the, the strategy of, of Flipper. You can see the, the 
the guys with this with this black stripes at their legs they are probably the, def the the goalkeepers so you see here that the goalkeepers having the task here to steal the defender position you always see these guys with the with the blue stripes at their legs here getting in position while all the others trying to bring the ball there so there's a clear structure in the flipper game the others are playing with the ball and the goalkeeper tries to uh, steal a getting good position here and then they're trying to bring the ball there so here's another free throw now for Budweiser we have 30 seconds left so far and we have, uh, we have the score of 0-0 zero, zero. so Budweiser very nice they lost 4-0 against Rixu now they are doing a great job against Flipper if they can keep the 0-0 zero, zero, they have a proper chance at the penalty shooting that here. would be an amazing first half yep. for Budweiser and not because they are a bad team but uh, I would have thought uh, Flipper um, we need to remember that Flipper is forces the decision forces yeah yeah so this is an amazing job uh, Budweiser does here and uh, if they keep up like that Flipper has a problem yeah definitely so I think here even the Champions Cup has its own route you know winning such a game so if you don't have any chance to score it's better to focus on defense because this game will definitely find a winner Flipper needs to win this game to get in the next round to get in the semi-final if they don't do this um, of course they're the if they lose this game they're immediately out um, of the of the race for number one so um, this team here losing is not able to win anymore so we really need to Flipper has a certain pressure here of course they're the group winner playing against the second of the other group you, we remember Budweiser lost against Rixu this is why they became second in the group we're talking about the quarterfinal Flipper last year silver medalist is here in favor to, to or is here the favorite uh, to win but um, currently Budweiser is very well positioned in their defense um, I'm I would like to see how Flipper still tries to do this they have uh, their game style, their strategy We've already analyzed that the goalkeeper, this guy with the blue, um, with this blue tape at the legs here, these are this guy that trying to steal a defender position or getting a good position close to the baskets. All the other players have the job then to bring the ball to this specific player then, but they bring it not from, like from upper, but they bring it really from the uh, from the bottom line. So they come really from the ground, from the floor, immediately touching the floor with the breast already and uh, then trying to push the ball on the other side of the baskets here to score on the other side we have Budweiser they don't have a real chance so far in the first half I think that their pass distances are too big they're trying to pass over the defender on the other side of the basket what is a long distance what is a there are a lot of hands legs and even players between it so this is the reason they they've lost the ball without making a good pass by this two three good situation they had Maybe they should also try to get in the 1-1 one, one fight first with the defender and then trying to make the pass. But so far, um, maybe they even just focused in keeping the ball in their team uh, instead of making a proper attack and losing it. And Because we have seen also Flipper very, very aggressive and very, very um, successful in their, in their counter attacks too. So Budweiser knows it's hard to score against Flipper. And if we try to score, it will be a massive and hard counter attack. So this may be the reason that they are focusing a bit more in keeping their score clean. So not receiving a goal. If this next 10 minutes, if we don't find a winner in the next 10 minutes of game, we are going to uh, have a penalty shooting immediately after the game. But we will be one against one. And as soon as one team is scoring and the other is not, this team is winning so it's not a round of three it's just a round of one against one it's a sudden death, uh, sudden death. yeah penalty shooting and we're in the second half I'm uh, back uh, just in the right moment and flipper is going uh, for the check basket in the corner waiting in the corner establishing their attack pattern before they go into the defense massive that, that but that's uh, interesting there was one flipper player going in all alone from the close side call from the referee he's pointing out a player on the bottom nope it was the referee on the open side free throw for flipper yep. free throw against but wise so I'm, I'm always curious about uh, after a break because the the teams have to exchange their knowledge of what they see in the game and if they change their strategy and if they go in in a different way if flipper tries a different strategy now to break open the defense of Budweiser, called from the referee again 
holding without ball free throw again against Budweiser. So now there's the team, there's this personal warning now here from the referee, Bob. He pointed the referee and told him, no, I have, I've seen you, I've seen what you've done. So let's see. I think the other referee is uh, also a German referee. I think it's Birgit Lütke on the other side. And here we are, uh, flipper the player number 14, Mikkel Rasmussen, tries to come uh, from the close side under heavy forechecking attack. Call from the referee again. Didn't see what happened. Flipper player tries to steal basket, holding without basket uh, without uh, ball and uh, free throw against Flipper. So Flipper gave away its advantage uh, with this attack and uh, the risk uh, one of the player was holding the basket and we have a free throw against uh, Flipper now and this is a chance for Budweiser now to test their offensive uh, capabilities in the second half here of Champions Cup 13th in Berlin. But Flipper is already in ball position. This was what, what mm. you were talking about, uh, Thorsten. Um, it is uh, Budweiser loses the ball very fast because they mm. make passes in front of the Flipper in players the that are too long, that are too yeah. slow. So it's, it's so easy for the Flipper players big, yeah. to catch them away. Yeah, to catch, uh, catch, yeah. So we see now here again, two Flipper players bringing themselves in position. This is now the best chance and it was this. This is the attack they wanted to do. This is what we talked about. The ball was from one player pushed at also directly at the basket while the other players came from the open side we have seen the both players and um, touch the ground with their chest or so with their body so there was no space between the players and the ground floor and this is the level they have so all the other players are upper them they're trying to save the ball down unfortunately we have not seen the number but it was maybe number four who pulled also the ball into it was Tor to uh, Luke Funk who made it or supported the goal so he made the assist or he finally scored but he had his arm inside of the basket so it was number four he was involved or he scored this is something we uh, try to find out later but so far now flipper in favor here now with the 1-0 lead there are six minutes and 30 seconds left and of course Budweiser now needs to score to have a chance to get in the semi-final uh, with this result now we see here the big pressure, but always, yeah, this is the difference. Budweiser always tries to get over the defender and the goalkeeper, while Flipper tries to get under the defender and bring the ball through. So this is the main difference of both game starts. So far, the Flipper strategy is more strategic, and now we have a, a free throw here for pushing. We can see also the Czech goalkeeper here. You can see the goalkeepers are, uh, you know, they have this this wristband tape so you can you can uh, recognize them as goalkeepers is something coming from the Scandinavian teams and obviously adapted by the Czech team as well so this for example something in, in Germany you don't see this often that the teams are going to tape their legs for positioning but uh, in some teams it's quite common so this for us as, as commentators is perfect to analyze in the games so we see here number four coming to the surface who was Tor who made obviously probably the first score now we see here 28 now Davidson playing with the ball great effort is a fall of course now for the Czech team it's not enough here just to defend and you see here this gap and another one made by Tor so this was a second goal now probably if it was Tor the first I don't know but the second definitely was made by uh, Tor Lukefunk who scores here for the 2-0 now this game is open you know it's always like the Czech team they were focused a lot in defending and now here there was a, a pass given to the first the attacker the pal comes through tour and he's pulled the ball in very nice effort very nice game start I have not seen who was giving the assist but now this is a very comfortable lead now here for for the flipper team of course now the, the Czech team needs to score twice what is very very tough in the last four and a half minutes they need to put a lot in the in the offense now but this also gives gaps in the defense we see here massive counter attack flipper here with four players underwater here now passing the ball very comfort very nice and this is what they're going to do now of course I assume he's going to attack the defender and try to give the ball down amazing I've been away for uh, at least two minutes and uh, I've missed two goals Unbelievable, yeah, you missed the goal, the entire match. But you see another flipper player now here in positioning. It's number 24 here now waiting for the pass. 
making the block for his another player and now this is flipper the game is open they can massive now but what it happened what what changed uh, Thorsten? give me a no, short it summary it was the same definitely the, the score happened like a, as the, the strateg strategical plan so there was one player now with his body really with this entire body touching the, the crown where he received the ball and he was bringing to the close side where then another player came there and attacked the goalkeeper and two players more or less two Danish players were touching the ball and putting it inside of the basket so this was very very hard to defend because there were two players pushing the ball at the same time and I assume it was Tor uh, Tor Funke, Luke Funke who scored finally the second one of course the Czech team now plays more open they try to put an effort to score here the second one there was a bit more space at the Czech team so there was a, a pass from the midfield a bit the player was around a meter away from the ground and he passed down to Tor again and another attack one. from the open yeah. side and that could be another wow very this well defended on the last six but you see now there's a l much more space around the the uh, the Czech, the Czech uh, basket the Czech basket yes do you but think they get tired no I don't think they I think no, they open up to be they need open better up, yeah. to they need to risk more yeah. they, it's not enough now just to focus on defense they need to score they have two and a half minutes left of course if they lose two or three zero it doesn't matter at least the loser of this game is out of the competition for gold. So it's a quarterfinal, so they definitely need to win here. Wow, no, nice pass uh, yeah. to the open side from the attacker. And uh, the one well receiving the ball is pulling out, and the other one was taking his position on the close side, on the open side of the basket. Yeah. But they pulled out totally and tried to again, again uh, go in. But yes, here starts the um, so with flipper two offensive left. defense. You see now that this uh, the, f the first time the Czech team in the second half has the ball and is playing around in the corner, but they are quite far away from the basket, so there's not a real pressure. And they have yes. less than a minute left uh, minute. to score and it's to equalize minutes. with uh, Flipper, which is really difficult because, like we said in the beginning, Flipper is one of the top defensive teams yeah. here in uh, in the Champions Cup. So the Czech team they did a, a very good job in the first half of the match. The defense was awesome. They they didn't they were probably worried about what's coming up with Flipper. Because Flipper has this very typical game style. They're doing this in, on, in a lot of games. So here it was a uh, even they, they they were worried about what's happening now here and again. The player taking the position, receiving the pass, making the try to score, but it didn't do it. It was number 28, unfortunately. Uh, Basher and Davidson who could not score here after receiving this great pass. But this was also a chance given by the Czech team, as you see, they're playing very open. They put a lot of effort in there for checking. So even the defender here is trying to catch the ball instead of taking in position at the basket. So of course, all this chance is now given here. This is a result of the more motivated for checking. Yeah of the Czech team but uh, the, the, so the far text to a pretty 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 yeah. good job here uh, playing against uh, the flipper team but uh, it, it, I think it's not endurance uh, that uh, made it it's just uh, flipper is used to this kinds of game and yeah. to be in the right moment to score and they only need two scores um, and then they they just close and make it impossible for for uh, Budweiser to to move into the uh, into the defense of the flipper team So we have 43 seconds as a timeout, that's timeout for Blues, so Flipper's taking a timeout a minute before the end of the game, I don't know if they just want to celebrate or it's really necessary, I'm not really sure, but there's a three throw for the Czech team, they have a 2-0 lead, I don't, I don't expect Czech team you now making two scores, uh, two goals in uh, one minute because it's running time, the not time is not stopping, not against a team uh, like Flipper, the time is not stopping, even if they would score, the time is running through and the till the time they can restart the match, the game is probably over so even in fact it is not possible here by uh, by running time to make two goals in that short time in that short remaining time so maybe it's a bit too early to congratulate flipper but they made a very great second half they really they 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 believed in their game strategy they followed their game strategy and they they received so they gained the success here and uh, on the other side uh, the Czech team did a very well job here. They they could def defend very very nice. So it was great to see that but match. But uh, Flipper is one of the top teams here, uh, Still, in yeah. and uh, they are looking for the trophy, and uh, so does Budweiser for sure. 
but uh, that's uh, the game. The game is over. It is. It, it was Apple. from the beginning. I, th I wouldn't have thought uh, Flipper has this big problems with uh, Budweiser, but uh, I would have thought uh, uh, Flipper would win. Very yeah, nice game from Budweiser here. As a, as a last year medalist, final medalist, but. Um, Obviously, the Czech team did a very good job. So they can now, they're out of the, for the race for one, for place one, two, three, and four. So the best place they can achieve is right now the fifth place. And uh, we cross the fingers that they go, that they, that they continue this, um, this level of defense and attacking game. So they have even probably trained and, uh, and uh, made a lot. So 2-0, right? Let me write it yeah. down. Ah, it was written. Now we have uh, Rixu and Malmö Triton. And then after this we have Zurich and uh, Firenze. For... Yep. So we're in the quarterfinals of the males. And after this, starting at 2 o'clock, we go quarterfinals of women. And uh, we have a two twist for for Germany against Firenze for Italy. Then after that, two thirty is Akaren from Norway against Austria Vienna. Then we have to see. Let me see. I don't have. I need to ask for the actualized uh, list. So I'll come back to you later with that. Vamos a ver. Finnish, I can. Can you speak Finnish, Tothem? No, and it's what about <laughs> Swedish? <laughs> no, I have to apologize. But let I will try with the names. Let's try and see um, to see. Let us start with the with the Finnish team. So we have one minute left. Uh, the Finnish team is playing in blue with number one, who is uh, Ferti Lennonen. Number four, Zamuli Jusila. Number five, Tom Hornbach. Number six, Jaro Latjonen. Number seven, Ju Alto. Number eight. Reggio Randameki, number 10, Milka Herkunen, number 12, Yari Lettunen, number 13, Tommy Zumalunen, number 14, Jaco Tauru, number 15, Jim Hombeck, number 66, Dremu Pilitari, number 18, Valtteri Lindunen, number 91, Zoli Rotjaninen, number 96, Temu Hirvonen. It al almost sounds like it was a, su a Finnish guy that just read the names. Oh, I don't know if it's, if it's correct <laughs> or not. You can give me feedback so far, so I've never, I've never had any Finnish lessons no. in my life. <laughs> Malmö Triton is with n number one, Carl, two, Marcus, three, Matthias, four, Andreas, five, Peter, seven, Johan, eight, Ulf, ten, Edwin, eleven, uh, Simon. Simon or Simon, yeah. twelve, Anders, uh, thirteen, uh, Stefan, fourteen, Emmanuel, nineteen, Olof, uh, thirty, Christopher, eighty-nine, Jens. Yes, this is so far the squad for both teams. We have the referees in the water. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have the referee list so far, so yep. we try to provide you the, the... As soon as we have the list, we're also starting to introduce the referees. And we are